Hi, Bruno Jr. here. Our podcast, Busting Addiction and Smiths, is sponsored by SafeHouseRehab.com. SafeHouse believes that traditional treatments fall short of the needs of clients who face the modern problems of addiction. Modern problems need modern solutions. Multiple addictions, multiple relapses, multiple triggers, and cheaper and more powerful street drugs set up unprecedented challenges facing treatment centers. What is needed is a more sophisticated approach a better way forward. There are three reasons to choose our progressive modern treatment program. One, a more sophisticated intake process. Two, technology proven to enhance recovery. And three, the most robust aftercare program in our sector. To learn more, visit us at safehouserehab.com. So, Bruno J. here. I want to cover the last, oh, I would say, I've been so clean and sober for 27, almost 28 years now, but I want to cover the last, let's say, oh, 24 or so years, 23 years, uh, after the period of my early recovery where everything started to change. I ended up being hired by the agency that I retired from, believe it or not. I spent 24 years with this company, so you can imagine, whereas before, the most I ever spent anywhere was a few years before I got fired or left, mostly fired, and then entering a career, which was really a career that lasted 24 years, and we were acquired, I ended up being hired by one company that was a year later acquired by another, but we didn't really change locations, so we changed names and administration, and I remember that You know, there wasn't a lot of fear in the acquisition because it was so new and it didn't matter too much. But there was a lot of fear going on throughout the company. And I decided to take a small risk and say, go to the new CEO. I said, you know what, Mike, you need this new and emerging discipline called account planning. He says, well, what's that about? I said, well, why don't I put together a little presentation for you and kind of explain, you know, uh, how it can benefit the company and what it does. So it came from Britain, of course. And as a result of agencies having to be more efficient, more creative at the same time. So I put together this presentation. It was just maybe 15 PowerPoint slides. I started presenting it, and he's, he, get, he doesn't read. He gets bored easily. He's a brilliant man. He says, so, okay, I get it. He says, what's this going to be good for us? It's going to be good for your new business uh, pitches. He says, go ahead and do it. So I started this thing, account planning discipline. And I ended up being... You know, at first I owned this whole thing as a one-man show, but then we built research around it, and I ended up being the lead planner for account planning and research at our agency that had, you know, nine or ten people, not directly reporting to me, but we work in teams. So I was kind of at the center of the team a lot of times. Sometimes it was research, sometimes it was analytics, sometimes it was strategy writing, which is my job. I had a couple of planners helping me, and I helped them. So it was a collaborative effort, and I understood the dip, began to understand as I developed um, the difference between leader, leadership and management even. Gosh, I'd never entertained, you know, thinking about these things, but now I was in a position of responsibility. I won't call it authority, uh, responsibility. I was responsible for the welfare and the development and the productivity and work, work product of a number of people. So I took it seriously. So leadership, as I define it in short terms, and I write in very short, direct ways. I don't, you know, over-elaborate because I respect the reader's time. And I, I, want, I want the reader to be rewarded by what I write or what I present so that it's a good experience for me and for In order to be a good writer and presenter, you have to leave a lot of fat on the table. Uh, what you leave out is just as important as what you put in. So long story short, uh, the difference between leadership and leadership, uh, management is doing things right, and leadership is doing the right things. So there you go. There is an ethical North Star to leadership. And And I learned that from Stephen Covey and from reading and studying. And I also um, understood, you know, what a purpose-driven organization was about, which is there is a higher purpose other than making money. Now, Milton Friedman in the 80s brought forth this radical idea, which is now the cornerstone of libertarian thinking, that the only business that a company has is to make profits for its owners. And that's nonsense, absolute nonsense. I rebel at that very thought, because you have a social responsibility as a company, you have a social and moral responsibility as a human being, 
companies are made up of human beings and what are you going to strip that out? No. So, you know, in the last few years there has been this, a reversal of thinking, not a reversal, but a modification of thinking that, you know, ethical corporate social responsibility CSR came along a few years ago. This whole business of gave, uh, giving back came along a few years ago. This whole business of being responsible to the planet came along a few years ago. It wasn't there in the 70s and 80s. The 80s were greed. You know, in the 80s, I had an office uh, in the mid-80s before it bottomed out in 1993. I had a corner office on the 26th floor of 1515 Broadway. We were run by greed. We were run by greed. And when you're run by greed, you're self-interested. You care not for your fellows. You're only in it for yourself. You carry a knife. It's horrible. You know, and that was one of the reasons that I got fired was that I had become not a very nice person. We were acquired by another company, and guess what they do when they want to start firing people? They fire the people they don't like, no matter how good they are. And I was one of those, you know, I was one of those arrogant son of a guns who they just fired, they hit the street. That's how I got the job in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know, and then I was fired from that job, and I ended up working for uh, the company that I ended up retiring from two years ago. So I had a 24-year journey, 24-year journey. Uh, and now, today, I would, I'm not going to fast forward too much, but I am still very, very active in AA, more active than I ever have been. I retired two years ago on good terms. I was one of the few people in the entire company that walked out of there on my own terms. You know, I said to my boss, so the one guy, so there were there was my boss who, who ran account planning and everything, I reported to him, and then he reported directly to the CEO. So, and there wasn't much of a barrier between the CEO and people like me at senior levels. He'd just walk in your office and start talking. So it wasn't very structured, but Brett, my boss, was the key guy. I said, Brett, I'm thinking about retiring uh, next year. He says, I'll wait another year, retire in 2017. So I retired at the beginning of 2017 because I could collect my benefits from the year before. Nobody blames you for doing it that way. And uh, I have been, uh, since then, I have reappreciated my, my recovery. I think for, for a fellow or a woman who's been around a long time, they have an obligation to do a number of things. One is to carry the message to the still suffering alcoholic because we're not aware of how much we know. You know, until we start talking, then people say, wow, you know, you know a lot. I said, look, in the 27 years of sobriety, I've averaged three meetings a week at least. So if that's 150 times 27, you've got about 4,000 meetings in there, maybe more. And that doesn't count my Al-Anon meetings or another fellowship that I belong to that's helped me with my uh, spending habits which I discovered a little while ago, you know, my money drunk. I made a lot of money and never had any. <laughs> and in one of my podcasts, I talk about, are you a money drunk? Which happens to a lot of recovering people because we don't want to be held accountable. And so the last thing to go sometimes is this business of using money as a drug. And I can talk about that. In fact, we're going to make that one of our little mini topics. Our podcast is sponsored by SafeHouseRehab.com, a modern approach to recovery. To learn more, visit us at SafeHouseRehab.com.